for the word of God. It's not how many words you hear and how much knowledge you gain. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus, I've been praying, will be, will be revealed to you. It's the revelation of Jesus. Apostle Paul, the great scholar in Jewish religion, he says, when the Lord was pleased to reveal Jesus in me, it's a revelation of Jesus being revealed in me. That makes all the difference. All the knowledge, all the understanding will be of little profit. But the revelation of Jesus will be of great profit to you. Lord, it's our prayer that through this word, Jesus will be revealed to us. It will be the revelation of Jesus Christ to our heart. So Holy Spirit, we pray that he will speak to us. You can speak through any vessel. You can speak even through Balaam's donkey. You have the power to speak. Your children are hungry, eager to hear what you have to say. So have your way for us to pray in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before I share, it's in my heart that I will share a testimony, a little testimony of a man. I received it from a friend. It was in Hindi language. I will try to translate it and be as brief as I could. Anyone of Hindi speaking who received the testimony, could they see the hands? Anyone else? Amran received it and our powerful testimony. I began to think about it. Actually, it was an interview. A lady was uh, interviewing a man who was a Hindu, a very religious man, a rich man, who didn't know the Lord. He knew his own religion, looking for the truth and simply translating. He was from Delhi, near some place, there was an open, open air meeting. There were some Christians who were gathered together there. Ordinary people. Just ordinary people. And he said, I was upset. I had an intention. So intentionally, he goes to that meeting with only one reason, to disrupt them. This Indian country Christians are just trying to convert people with deception. And he went to disrupt that meeting. He said there were some people, ordinary people, they had built a stage. There were some ordinary people standing on the pulpit. And men brought an invalid person carried by four or five, he says. And they were bringing him, he couldn't walk, paralyzed. And one of the fellow from these ordinary people, he got off the stage, came down, and he simply said this word. Yesu ke naam mein thik ho ja. That was a Hindi word. In the name of Jesus, be healed. And he began to walk. And this Hindu intelligent rich man said, he said, Oh, it's fake. Absolutely fake. They have paid this man, paid these four people. They have made a drama. They have come. And, oh, no healing. That's, I'm going to expose here. I'm going to destroy them. He was still bent on destroying them. Next, a mother came with a young boy who was born blind. That's what she, was, she told them. So he, again he saw them, one of the men came down and he prayed the same prayer in the name of Jesus, be healed. And the boy could see. I said, oh no, it's also fake. 
He said, this can happen anytime. Anyone can come forward. I was blind. Mom is crying. They paid the money to them. And they play a drama. It's another drama. Then, he said, these people are open air. And they have guitar and other little instrument. And sometime, they will be late and they will go. And they will appoint one to keep an eye on the luggage. On the guitar and things. He said, I offered myself on that day. I will take care of he said, you go and sleep, I will keep an eye on the... And he said, I had a plan. The plan was to take everything, destroy it. There will be no instrument and there will be no meeting and I will be okay. I tell you, I was amazed when I was hearing this. Then he said, I was there keeping an eye. When everyone, everything is calm, then I will take the things away, destroy them. So he wanted to do a damage. Lo and behold... A young boy came crying and he was crying and he said, please come home. My mother is very sick. She is at the point of death. Could you please come? And he said, I addressed him a bit rudely. I said, you foolish boy, you should go to a doctor, find a hospital. Why have you come here? And he said, the boy said, oh. I have heard that here sick people come, they are prayed and they get healed. And he said, could you please, and he was thinking that he's one of them. He said, could you please come and pray for my mother? He said, I didn't want to argue with this young man and he went to his home. There he was lying there and the doctor was there. The doctor said, young man, don't waste your time. She's in coma and in a few minutes she is going to go. I said, well, it doesn't matter, I'm going to pray anyway. I wanted to use the same words that these men were using. Same words. I was wondering how could this happen. Whether thinking the love of God was in operation. God's eyes were on this man. This is added, you know, I'm not, uh, this is not the testimony. He said, I closed my eyes and uh, I used the same words. In the name of Jesus, be healed. And I did not want to open my eyes because I was thinking, I don't know what will happen. Until someone tapped me at the back, I looked at that and the lady was up, standing behind me, absolutely healed. Oh, I said, it can also be a drama. He said, maybe they planned long way and it, can be, it is possible. Just to deceive people, it can be a long way. Oh, he said, no, no healing. And as he was out, he said, another young Hindu, devoted Hindu, he was devoted to, he was a devout Hindu, and another Hindu came, and he said, could you please, I've heard that place, and you seem to be from that place, could you come and pray for my son, who had polio, and all his arms, and face, and everything is twisted. He has never walked, he is 30 years of age. He was a boy when the polio came and now he's 30 years of age. Could you please come and pray for him? He said there was another opportunity to expose the Christians. He said, I came, I said, I'll go. And I said, this time I kept my eyes open. And lo and behold, when I use these words, in the name of Jesus, be healed. The hand began to lose the mouth began to be built up and the young man of 30 years of age was standing. I was wondering why, Lord, why did you give him so many opportunity? And the only answer was my love. I love human being. I love this man. He was sincere. He didn't know anything about the teaching. He didn't know anything about the Lord. I gave him opportunity after opportunity. I made the way clear for him. And because I was thinking, Lord, why it doesn't happen when I pray? I said, you're all right. You are mine. Though you are a bit messed up and you don't display that power, but still you're mine. Because that's what I was questioning, Lord, if this can happen to a person. You know, it happened to, happened to Sadhu Sundar Singh, another man. Another man in the village in India, in Punjab. And this man was from Sikh religion. And God loved him too. 
He was drunk with religion. His mother died when he was 14 years of age. And there was only high school, missionary school in his house. And he was the son of a rich farmer, Sher Singh. And what happened? This man had another plan, just like this Hindu. And he planned to destroy Christianity. He said, Hindu religion is the only religion that will be established in India. Christian can't stay and this school will not stay. And so he will gather people, young people of his age. He was 16 or 17. His mother died when he was 14. And it is, it is said about him that he, he worked so hard that he could, rem he could remember Bhagavad Gita by heart. By the time he was 18 or, or 14, he could remember, he was so, so it is written about him, his mother made him sadhu. He made him religious. And this man, by the age he was 14, he was drunk with religion. So drunk with religion that he wanted to have some right. He will gather some young people of his age and he will throw stones at the meeting and he began to Disturb and persecute the people of God. Again, God in his mercy, in his love, moved. In the end, he went to an extreme. He said to his friend, let's make mockery of God. He took the Bible from the school. When he asked, can we have the Bible from one of the teachers? And she was very happy. Oh, Sundar, now we are going to be free from persecution. He is asking a Bible. And he took the Bible got to gather a few friends. He, he actually showed them before he went to get the Bible, you burn the fire, I will bring the Bible, and I will put the Bible on the fire, and I will burn it, see what happens. And my friend, he brought the Bible, and these are the words he used, a dead book on the live fire. Live fire. Bible was burned. Sundar Singh says, a fire began to burn in my heart. I was not satisfied. I wanted to end my life. There was a railway line going by the village. He said, if there is a God, I want to meet with him. The first train has gone in the evening. The next train is coming on the six o'clock. If there is a God, I want to see him. If he doesn't show up, six o'clock, the train is coming, I'm going to end up my life. I am fed up of religion. Religion cannot help anyone. It didn't help anyone yet. It cannot help anyone. It's relationship with the Lord. So he was tossing and turning, determined that at six o'clock, I'm going to go and just finish up. I'm fed up of this life. What happened? About four o'clock, if I'm not forgetting, Jesus appeared in the room, a great light. And he said, Sundar, I'm the way, the truth, and life. Sundar was excited, went to his father, Shirsi. He said, Daddy, Daddy, I've seen Jesus. And Daddy said, you've gone crazy. Yesterday, you burned the Bible, and we were proud of you. And today you say, he said, these hands burned the Bible. Bapu, Father, rest of my life, these hands will preach the Bible. And Sundar Singh made a history. He was a man of God. History is written. He came to England. And I'm just telling you a story. But I tell you, my friend, this is a reality. He was in subcontinent. The other day we said, some people... In Punjabi language, we'll ask him, Sundar Singh, when are you going to get married? And uh, he, these were his words. I spoke it earlier sometime. Lade Kopuchangi. Whenever they asked him, when are you going to get married? He said, we will ask the bridegroom. Always in Punjabi. They will ask in Punjabi, when are you going to get married? He will always say, Lade Kopuchangi. We will ask the bridegroom, never got married, made an impact on history, disappeared, I believe, 
He died, nobody knows. Books are written about him, films are made about him. I'm telling you, God loved the world so much, my friend. These stories are true, and they are happening now. It happened at the time of Jesus. It happened at the time of the disciple, I should say. There was a man by the name of Cornelius, wasn't he? He was devout. He was religious. Not only religious, he was practical. Giving alms, praying, fasting. Was he saved? Was he delivered? Was he set free from himself? No. It's only Jesus Christ who sets free, free my friend. An angel appears to him. It's written in the book called Acts of the Apostle. Angel appears to him and he says, Your prayers are answered. Your arms are accepted. Send men to Jaffa and call the man Peter and he will tell you the way of salvation. There is no other way. There is no other truth. There is no other life, my friend. And that who, com who, complain, who claim to be on the way, the truth, and the life is living in us. What are we doing with this? What are we doing with his presence? Christ in me, the hope of glory. Of course, the story, you can read it yourself. He sent some faithful servant. Peter was brought, but Peter was very intelligent. He would not come on his own. Because if he would come in the house of Gentile on his own, he will be rebuked sharply. So he took six men with him. Peter said, why have you called? He said, you want to hear what the Lord has given you. As he was preaching, the Holy Spirit came on them. Exactly the way the Holy Spirit came on the 120. And Peter said, who can stop me from baptizing them now? Well, I'm telling you, this is going to happen again. This is going to appear again. God is going to take ordinary people. I don't know why I'm going with the testimony only, but God is going to produce powerful testimony. We are going to live for his glory. We are going to live for his glory. And we, since we have got a little time, I will simply say a little bit about this. And I'm telling you, my friend, what stops our effectiveness, what stops the fruitfulness, is only one thing, and I just want to touch this and then we will stop. Let's read Isaiah chapter 6, and we'll start from the beginning. God's people, it is time for us to live in reality for the Lord. Today will be gone, it will not come back again. Tomorrow, of course, is not mine. I'm going to live every hour in the will of God, in the presence of God, focusing upon Him. Not on me, not on my situation, not doing my will, but doing the will of God. Isaiah chapter 6, let's read it. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train, our glory, filled the temple. Let's stop here because we don't want to leave it half done. Until Uzziah died, Isaiah did not see God. I want you to remember this point. Uzziah has to die before you will behold the Lord. Was he prophesying before this? Yes, sir, he was prophesying. Say it if you know it. Was he making prophecy? Yes. Was he the prophet? Yes. Was he speaking the truth? Yes. yes. Did he see God? Yes. No. Not yet. He had not seen God yet. What was the reason he did not see God? Uzziah. Uzziah was the personification of self. Self, we have been talking about, self is more devilish than the devil. devil. 
And the reason we gave that the self is more devilish than the devil was very simple. Self brought that bright and morning star down. What makes you down is greater than you, isn't it? Delilah was stronger than Samson, wasn't she? Because he brought him down. He conquered. Who she conquered? What conquers you is bigger than you. I tell you, my friend, it is time that we think in these terms. Uzziah, just let's read about Uzziah. Who was Uzziah? It was, he was a king of Israel. I think he was 10th king of Israel. He was the personification of self. There was a time he was walking with God. When a priest by the name of Azariah was teaching him, when this was not there, he had his own ways. He became very strong. His strength brought him down. His prosperity brought him down. He began to do things he was not supposed to do. He began to use his own will. He began to throw his weight around. He began to assert himself. He began to do things that he was not supposed to do. But his self took over and he wanted to show God I can do anything. I can behave any way I like. It doesn't matter. Now, so let's, let's, re let's read about Uzziah, and then we will carry on this subject uh, next time. Because our time is already gone, and it was in my heart that you should hear these powerful testimonies. Second Chronicles chapter 26, we will read from verse 16 to 20. Listen very carefully, this is Uzziah. Until Uzziah dies, until self is driven away, done away with, God has got nothing to do with the old man. God will not begin to do the patchwork with Adam. He doesn't do patchwork. I see someone said beautifully, I love it. He said, don't kill yourself, let God do it. Oh, you didn't hear it. Don't suicide, don't kill yourself. God, let God do it. That means, let the self be taken care of him. He is living in you, isn't he? Has he not established his throne in you? I tell you, my friend, if I will be conscious of the presence of God and begin to think, really, he is living in me, his throne is in me, and from inside, from that throne, he can handle, handle everything that is beyond my power. Whatever overpowers you, from inside, he will begin to deal with them. He can deal with the Self, I tell you, my friend, let him have the permission. In the year that King Uzziah died, or it is a chronicle, uh, I mean, Second Chronicle, chapter 26, verse 16 to 20. We're going to read this. We're just going to read about this man who was, I said, the personification of self. Until he died, Isaiah did not see God. But then he was strong, Uzziah, the king, the tenth king of Judah. When, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Oh, I tell you, God's people. God is longing to give wealth to some people. But God knows they will make mess of their lives. In his mercy, he keeps them poor. I tell you, we can have things. And... Do our own will. But when he was strong, when he was strong, he was twisted. His heart was lifted up to his destruction. I tell you, watch out. What you are able to do with your ability, you can bring your destruction. With your ability, with my ability, I can cause my destruction. And that's what happened to King Uzziah. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord, his God. He was trying to be good. He was trying to be prominent. He was trying to throw his weight around. I'm great, I'm strong, I can do anything. It doesn't matter what God says, it doesn't matter. I don't give any value to that. That's what he was trying to do. 
For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the... Well, everybody would say that's a good thing. It's good to go into the temple of the Lord. But don't behave what is not your duty. For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. He did something that God didn't want him to do. He did some, my friend, that is our bread don't fall. I've got money, I can go to any country as a missionary. If I've not heard from the Lord, it will be dangerous. Oh yes, we need to listen to God. We need to listen to God. My sheep hear my voice. And when the sheep are wayward, they will do whatever pleases them. Okay, let's go on. Verse 17. Listen, this is a very powerful message. Uzziah died. He was a epitome of pride. He was a personification of self. When he dies, Isaiah sees God. He sees his glory. What happened to them? He was changed. He was transformed. And as and Azariah is also his name. Uzziah and Azariah is also his name. Don't, don't forget it. Azariah, the, you know, Azariah is a priest, sorry. Uzziah's name, there is Uzziah's other name, sorry. And Azariah the priest went in after him and with his fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men. That means they were gods. It was the temple service. Okay, let's keep on going. And they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, It appertaineth not, it is not your duty, it is not your work. Upon thee, Uzziah, to burn incense into the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense, go out of the sanctuary. For you has transgressed, neither that it be for thine honor from the Lord God. Get out of it. You are transgressing. You are trying to throw your weight around. You are trying to show I am something. I can do anything. I can even be a priest. Then Uzziah was wroth. Can you see that? How dare you tell me what I can do with my ability? How dare you tell me what I can do with my money? Then Uzziah was wroth. And a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with priests, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead. Before the priest... In the house of the Lord, from beside the incense altar. Very dangerous. The word of God says these things were written for our admonition, for our teaching. What does it make you? Meek, humble. Let's not try to throw our weight around. Let not self be exalted. That self to be kept where is its place. Self, self has got its right place on the cross. On the cross, my friend. Cross is the only solution for self. Religion has got no power to remove sins. Was he trying to be religious? Was Uzziah trying to be religious? Big time, I tell you, he was drunk with religion. He was drunk with religion and he was a, a very religious. In fact, he was acting like a priest. What happened? Had the leprosy, the worst sin that separates him from other people. God's people, we can finish the message. I believe these testimony were powerful testimony. I believe the Lord has impacted our heart with this testimony, particularly the recent one. Let's pray that God will give us his fear. We be renewed in our mind. We will be found focused on the Lord. We will be exalting him in our lives. 
will keep itself where it belongs, on the cross, dead. Then the resurrection life of Christ will be lived through us. He will live this life through us. That's what Christianity is all about. Our endeavor, our effort, is only one. Get rid of self. Then you can be the disciple of Jesus. As our Lord said, anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself. Oh my friend, let's pray that self will never raise his ugly head and destroy us. Uzziah, to his destruction, use his strength. We will never do it. Our talents must be in the hand of the Lord. Let's stand in the presence of the living God, God's people. Let's stand. God is going to do great things. Great things he will do, using us as vessels. He is looking for yielded vessels for surrendered vessels. Vessels who will be like their master, who said, learn of me because I'm meek. Was he not in a position to say I'm the son of God? It will be true. I'm the word of God, it will be true. What did he say? Learn of me, I'm meek. Learn of me because I took the form of a man. That is the highest, highest position of meekness, my friend. God becoming man, taking the form of a servant. Shall we not then deal with self once and for all? Shall we not ask the Lord who is in you and who is established in your heart, who is king on the throne, Deal with myself. Discipline me. Right time. I don't want to be disciplined in eternity when it'll be too late. I long for discipline now. He has made me a son. We'll talk more about this next Sunday. But God's people, let's pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus, we commit ourselves into your hand. We pray that we will not only put the self to death, but bury out of sight. Because it's stinking. It frightens souls away from you. So Lord, we surrender. We yield as vessels to you, Holy Spirit. Take us. Use us. Have your way with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.